Carlos Ramirez, owner of NBS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. Today I want to talk about the Harley Davidson subwoofer kit for the 2014 and up Harley Davidson Street Glide, Road Glide, and Electric Glide. So I've gotten literally hundreds of emails about this asking when I'm going to review the kit and what my thoughts are on it and did I listen to it yet and did I hear it yet. Well, I've had the kit since it released. I literally got it on its release date. And there are so many components to the kit that I didn't want to do a review without hearing it. So then we were actually going to do the install on one of the upcoming builds. But we've been so busy that we haven't been able to schedule it. And then I was going to buy a set of bags um, and just drop them in the bags and just put on one of my personal bikes so I can demo it. But uh, luckily, we actually had a client book the job and we just completed the job. So I actually got to listen to it and I'm glad I waited to review it because we ran into issues on the bike and it was issues I would have never thought about testing or talking about in my video. So to be honest, I didn't expect much from this setup. Rockford's infamous for underpowering everything. I understand why they do it. They want to build the products going to last and not harm the stator and not draw too much from the electrical system. But um, we're used to the Rockford Fosgate fanatic stuff for cars. We're used to the 19-inch subwoofer and TW3s. And I'm sorry, the T3s, the T0, T1, T2, T powerful subwoofers and BD2500s. So when it comes to motorcycle audio, we just feel that Rockford's a little too toned down, a little too watered down, a little too underpowered. But um, to be honest, they really did a good job with this subwoofer system. The fit and finish is incredible. The quality of the parts. But I can tell you right now, this is not an easy install for a do-it-yourselfer. This is not a walk in the park. It gave us a hard time uh, the first time through. Not that the inst install is difficult. It's just time consuming. There's a lot of parts and you have to read the instructions and do the do it exactly right the first time because the tolerances are so close, it's not going to fit. So you have to read the instructions two or three times and make sure you do it exactly like they tell you to do it because there is not one spare centimeter. This kit fits in the bag perfectly. It uses every cubic centimeter of space and the fit and finish is flawless when it's done right. I'm super amazed. I'm not amazed because Rockford builds a good product, but it's amazing to see something so well executed. The fit and finish of the product is awesome. We also have a full uh, Harley Davidson audio powered by Rockford system that we're going to be reviewing too. We actually got that way before we got this set up, but it's so complicated to install. And then I want to do a thorough video on how to put it in and how to wire it. There's just so many pieces and factory part numbers and factory harnesses that it was just easier to review this first. So, something that might turn people off right off the bat is the price. It's $2,500. You get uh, two 10-inch woofers. You get a uh, 800-watt amp. You get all the wiring harnesses. So, this is meant to be an upgrade to somebody that already has uh, Rockford Fosgate Stage 3. So if you have the six and a half in the front and the six by nines in the lids, or if you have the six and a half in the front and nothing else, this would be an add on to that setup. So depending on what you paid for your stage three, uh, I think the average going price installed is like 3,000, 3,500. Well, this is an additional 2,500 plus labor on top of that. So if, if you do it yourself, then you can get the Rockford Fosgate kit for 1,500 then this kit would be an additional 2,500 on top of that. So you're talking four grand in parts if you do the labor yourself. If you have a shop do it, you could be six, maybe $7,000 all in, but that gets you two amplifiers, one in the fairing, one in the saddlebags. That'll get you six fine speakers in the lids. That'll get you six naps in the front, um, all the wiring, uh, Fit and finish is flawless. So the bike we have here, we customer wanted to keep it all Rockford at first. Um, we just don't like the Rockford six and a halves. The Rockford six mines I'm fine with. I really like their six by nines. 
and the 6 fine nines work really well with this kit and there's no extra space to upgrade the 6 fine nines because Rockford made sure that their 6 fine nines would fit perfectly and Rockford has one of the slimmest 6 fine nines on the market so you can't really upgrade to a bigger 6 fine if you're going to run this kit. Um, the bike that we're building, we did upgrade the front, so we ended up going with the DB Drive Moto 6 CDs. Um, bike sounds excellent. I was super, super, super impressed with the output of these enclosures. I wasn't, I was betting against you, Rockford. I wasn't expecting much. I wasn't expecting it to play low. I wasn't expecting it to be loud. For the little bit of power that you're running, these things sound really, really good. And the fact that you're not cutting the entire bag, you're just doing the V-shaped cutout on the shock tower. I was amazed that we were able to get that much output. There was no vibration because these actually stiffen up the bag when you drop them in. So since the enclosure takes up the entire bag, the bag doesn't flex. So we had no vibrations, no rattles. It was just clean, tight, accurate base. Don't get me wrong, it's not competition level quality, it's gonna knock your socks off, but it's a really good rider bike, fully rounded, surround sound. And then the claim to fame about this kit is you can drop the woofers in the bags, have your base, parking lot pimp, but if you gotta travel and you need your bag space, you literally disconnect the two plugs, one in each bag, slide the enclosure out, leave it in your garage, Amplifier stays in the bag and you have 100% use of all your bag space. It's a great, great, great design. Um, I think this is going to be a big hit with the CVO crowd. The reason I say that is the factory audio in the CVO sounds pretty damn good for factory. The only thing it lacks is bass because you have six and a half in the front, five by sevens in the lids. You really don't have bass. Now, this is a drop-in fit without modifying your factory setup. You can leave all of that alone and then just add base, and then it's removable. Um, we have to get a CVO in here so I can confirm and test. The only issues I see is we might have to remove the CVO amplifiers, or if you have the CVO that doesn't have the amplifier in the saddlebags, if you only have the amplifier in the fairing, then this will work. The problem is the Rockford amp, goes in the same location that the CVO amps go, and that would be in the back section here. So this is the one, one saddlebag gets an amp, one doesn't. This is the one for the bag that doesn't get the amp. So it doesn't have the cutout for the amplifier, which means that on the CVO, this will not drop in because it's gonna hit the amplifier. So on, on bikes that have the boom audio with no amplifier in the saddlebag, this will work for you. So once you have the upgraded audio in the Harley, but you're lacking bass, this might be a worthwhile solution. Um, so it's 2,500 for the kit plus a full day of labor. So whatever the shop's labor rate is, you're gonna add that on. But um, I see value in it. I don't think it's gonna be a big hit at our shop because we do our stage packages and our tens have more output than the Rockford tens, but our tens are not removable. So you're not pulling out our tens to and, and using your bags. That's not going to work. So if you want a solution that you can take in and out, this is definitely a solution to look into. I'm telling you. I'm, so this is going to be a two part video. So in tonight's video, I'm just going to go over the kit and show how it mounts. And in tomorrow's video, I'm actually going to show it to you playing. And you're going to be really surprised, pleasantly surprised. Rockford did a great job. Hats off to you guys. I know it cost a bunch of money to engineer this and the fit and finish. You guys definitely put some time and effort into this and it shows. It's definitely a product we'll be offering our clients. Um, it's not for everybody. It's pricey. It's a little expensive. But um, what on a Harley isn't. So I'm glad we waited to do the video until we actually physically did an install on a client's bike who uses it. The number, the first issue we ran into is the client had air ride on the bike. So the location for the plug and the plugs for this look really similar to the factory Harley plug. If you get the Harley Davidson, um, audio powered by Rockford factory. That's the replacement for the boom audio system from Harley. 
So in the new 2021s, if you get the upgraded uh, audio from Harley, it's called Harley Davidson Audio powered by Rockford. Well, in their setup, they have the plugs that look just like this on the side, cut into the side of the saddlebag. So they literally look identical to this. And that's the first thing that cut to mind when I saw the Rockford setup because it's a two inch hole saw that you use to make the cut out and then the plug mounts from the inside and they're 100% waterproof. So the issue with this install is the plugs came out exactly where the air ride tank was on the bike. So luckily this bike had an extended tail and it's, so we were, it's got a CVO style tail. So the tail goes further back than a factory tail section. So we were able to move the hole back two to three inches to clear the air ride and to clear the factory frame support bar. And then the plug's still not visible from the back. You can't tell that it's there. So anybody that has air ride on their bike, if the air tank is on the clutch side and you have your tank mounted this way, this kit is not going to fit unless you move the mounting plug further back. Now, this is something you might want to look into before you buy the kit because depending on how your factory tail is, the cutout for the plug might be visible. So it's something you want to take a look at. I'll provide some measurements in tomorrow's video. So when you measure your bike, you can see whether the connector is going to be visible or not. On this bike, we got lucky. It's not visible. So everything worked. We just had to move some wires around, extend some harnesses. So if you have factory boom audio amplifiers in the bag, this kit's not going to work for you. If you have factory air ride, it's not going to be a drop in fit. You have to move some stuff around on the kit install side to make it work with your factory, with your airbag setup. Um, the kit comes with an awesome template. And some very, very detailed instructions. So you, see, you can see the template is perfect fit. So just like the 6 mile 9 kit, you drill your holes. And then you follow the template with a jigsaw. And have that part cut out and fall out. Let me show you how well this fits. That thing slides in there tight. Lid closes and leaves you just enough room for the six by nine. This works with uh, factory boom audio, and it also works with aftermarket amplifiers. So this is the grill. So after you make the cutout on the shock tower, there's your grill. This piece that goes on the inside bag. After the amplifier is mounted, the amplifier mounts to the back of the bag with a bracket that's lined in double-sided tape. This bracket right here so the amp slides and locks into the bottom and then there's two screws on the top that hold it in place then you slide this really good looking cover on it and you get an OEM factory fit and finish this is the quick disconnect that goes on the outside of the bag They've included the two inch hole saw that you're going to need for the plug mounts. This is the wire harness that connects to the subwoofer and the six mile nine. And then it comes so it can tape itself to the bottom of the bag. That way the insert, when you insert the woofer, it doesn't damage the cable. And when you put stuff in the bag, it doesn't damage the cable. 
It comes with new mounting hardware to mount the bags. So if you have those half turn clips that we always take off when a client's bike comes in, we add any weight to the bag and we convert it to the thumb screw nut and bolt. If you have the half turn clips, it's gonna the it's gonna have you remove them and then it comes with 516 bolts with a flat head. And if you have the turnstile knobs, the knobs will not allow the enclosure to slide in. So you have to take those off and use the included bolts. These bolts sit completely flush, so it allows the woofer to slide all the way into the bag. So those are wiring connections. Harness is super simple. You have power and ground at the battery. You have your accessory plug that plugs in. Uh, same when you need a remote turn on for your Rockford amplifiers. Then you have the subwoofer signal input harness. And that's it, it's done. Here's your input harness right here. So if you're using the Rockford Fosgate wiring harness from your stage three kit, this plugs directly into it. And that's the signal that feeds the amplifiers in the bag. This goes to the opposite side and that's it. Simple, simple harness. That's probably the easiest part of the entire install. Uh, has everything you need. Now let me go to the bike and show you the one that we have already installed. The instructions are crystal clear too. It comes shows you exactly what to do. How to screw in the templates. Rockford always does a great job with their instructions. And it even has a guide on how to tune the amplifier. This is James's beautiful big wheel street glide. So he already had the Rockford Fosgate lid kit. He actually bought it as a complete kit. And you see how perfectly that six mine sits in there. Rockford did a great job designing this kit. That is 100% installed and working. So to pull it out of the bag, you just disconnect this one plug, grab it by the handle, and slide it up. Just like that. Drop it back in. Plug it up, and you're back in business. Are the harnesses neatly by the battery. Nice factory fit and finish. This is where we had the issue. There's his air ride tank. So you can see that's where they want you to mount the connector and that's not going to work because the bag is basically up against the air ride tank. Luckily, this tail comes all the way back flush with the bag. So there's our new hole right there. And it clears. This is what the connector looks like when you drill the hole in the side of the bag. It's a pretty good size hole. There's a nice neat wire runs. We didn't go with a Rockford amplifier for this setup. We went with a Sound Digital Evo X800 to run the front, but we did use the Rockford amp to run the woofers. I wanted to see how it sounded. The customer told me if I need to upgrade it, go ahead and upgrade it. Didn't have to upgrade it. It sounds really, really good. So we have NVS Audio Amp Mounting Plate, Evo X800. 
X Air DSP. Tomorrow, I'll let you hear how it sounds. Here's everything included with the kit.